The first thing you're going to notice is a very obvious one, is that it comes with the FL barrel kit out of the box with two backs as opposed to the standard one that you would get with just about any other Planet Eclipse marker. This is a nice advantage which allows you to size down your paint if you're playing with smaller rounds or if for whatever reason your paint has swollen a bit, you have that option out of the box, you don't need to go make further investments in another barrel. Taking a look at the marker itself, you will notice that there have been some changes made to the trigger along here. It has been redesigned to be a lot more adjustable than the previous iterations of the sling trigger from Planet Eclipse, uh, as we saw in the CS1. While it was very adjustable, they've taken it to a new level with a hinge here that allows you to actually swing the lower end of the trigger out to make it a lot better for folks like me with long gangly fingers. The next thing you will probably notice is that it does have a lower profile than the original model CS1. This is very advantageous if you want to stay low or if you found that it had a bulky uh, back cap that you know was just a little bit difficult to aim around. CS2 has a flat profile across the top and is much lower profile. On the outside, you'll notice that the grips look a little bit different. That is because they are now toolless access. You don't need tools to get into these. You just have these little clips right here that you pop out of the way and voila, the grips come off. So if you want to remove these, again, no tools, just pop it right off. Now, these grips will work on an original CS1 with some slight modification. Uh, however, original CS1 grips will mount onto these with no problems, as you'll notice that these stabilizer posts here are also threaded for the classic grip screws. So if you are unable to find the newest grips and you need a new set, don't despair. You can get your hands on a set of original CS1 grips and they will go right on. The marker still runs on AA batteries, which are easy enough to access through the foregrip as before. However, this time around, rather than the batteries just being hidden exclusively by the rubber grip itself, now they are contained in a plastic harness, which encompasses them and holds them in place like uh, the ETHA 2 setup does. Another similarity that the CS2 holds with the CS1 that was a very well received feature is the fact that there are no tools required to remove the eye covers. They are held in place by two plastic clips on either side here and it also houses a spare detent right here. So if your detents go down mid-game, you are able to easily change them out without having to worry about visiting a tech booth or, heaven forbid, not uh, having any service at all if you're nowhere near a tech booth. Having a look at the eye covers and then the eyes themselves brings us to a new feature which was introduced in the uh, Ether 2 platform, and that is a set of eyes that don't actually look into the breach directly as the eyes traditionally have. What they do is actually look out and away from the board in this direction and on the inside of the eye cover is a reflective surface it's like a mirror and what that does is it allows the marker to see indirectly and more importantly what it does is if you have a break in the chamber it prevents any paint from ever getting on your eye and therefore also prevents or at least ideally prevents corrosion of uh, the eye contacts and things like that which we have seen in other markers with stationary solid eye wire. This also makes cleaning a whole lot easier because if you have a break, you just pop your eye cover off, wipe it, and put it back in, and away you go. And once again, it's a toolless feature so you can do this just about anywhere, anytime. The CS2 also comes with the Planet Eclipse low-rise feed neck, lowering the profile even more of this marker, as well as then the traditional sprocket, screw, and lever lock. This is the Gamcore Pro. It has several advantages over the original Gamma Core, one of them being the volume of air that can get inside the can around the spool. The spool itself has been reduced in size and then the inside of the can has been expanded a little bit. Not much. You might notice the size of the spool, but you're probably not going to notice the size of the can. Anyways, what that means is more air means um, more air. <laughs> what that means is with a higher volume of air, it allows for a slower acceleration of the bolt as it begins to move forward. What that means is smoother shot, less air used, quieter, much like the LV-1 was a sudden jump uh, in sound signature and efficiency from the Eagle 11 to the LV-1 because it's a much longer uh, shot cycle, as does this. It's not an enormous jump, but it is small and subtle, but you will see better efficiency and a smoother shot out of your CS2 than you would have obviously out of a CS1 or possibly even your GTEC. Second advantage is there have been issues in the past with soft tip bolts not functioning properly, the tips themselves popping off. It's probably the chief complaint that you see with Planet Eclipse spool valves and, and ethers. Planet Eclipse has remedied this by instead of having a bolt tip that sits on the end, it actually sits on the inside. 
right here. So it is just shy of impossible for it to swell up and shoot out. In the event that you find yourself not wanting to use the soft tip bolt, the CS2 does come with a standard hard tip bolt and you can drop that in with very minimal effort. As you will notice, the way I put the soft tip back in, just like that. The CS2 is available for pre-order only at the moment, so go to badlandspaintball.com and place your pre-order to make sure that you get yours. Be sure to check us out on social media for updates on all the latest gear and equipment and tech tips, all that kind of good stuff that we love putting out there for you. I'm Mason for Badlands Paintball, and I'll see you on the field.